Although the codes we've discussed so far in this lecture have utilized the binary operation of plus, you know, addition inside of uh, Z2N, we really haven't utilized the full structure of this thing. So first of all, when you take Z2N with addition, this is going to be a group. So let's start to use the full strength of the group theory we've developed uh, with these code for these codes so far. So this actually leads to the main idea of this video, what we call a group code. A group code is a code, which remember by def definition, a code is just a subset of Z2N, right? A group code is going to be a subset of Z2N that is itself a group, aka a subgroup. So a group code is a code that is also a group. And since it since it's, sits inside of Z2N, it needs to be a subgroup of Z2N. Uh, let me give you an example of one. Okay, so consider the following code C, which lives inside of Z27. Uh, you'll notice, of course, it does have the identity element that's required to be a subgroup. Um, we have these other 15 elements, right? 001111, uh, 001010. Uh, did I say that one right? 0010101. Anyways, I'll leave it up to you to kind of verify that this, in fact, does form a subgroup of order 16 inside of Z2N. So this is going to be an example of a group code. Now, just so we connect it with what we saw before, right? Uh, so these are... These are binary sequences of seven bits. So the first parameter here is a seven. Um, how big is this thing? Of course, 16 is two to the fourth. So this is an example of a seven four group code. Okay, and we'll talk about the importance of it being a group in just a second. Uh, but some things to pay attention to, like I said, how do you know it's actually a group code? Well, again, here, it has the identity that's easy to check. What about inverses, the inverse axiom? Well, the thing is when you're in the group Z2N, every element is its own inverse. So being closed under inverses is actually a trivial statement uh, for these codes. And so then uh, the next thing to check is addition. Is it closed under addition? Well, there's a little bit of an argument that has to be made here. Again, with this example, you could check by trial and error that it is in fact closed under addition. But I also want to mention that you actually don't even have to check to see if it has the zero uh, vector in there or not. Because of the following idea, if your code is not empty, right, then it contains some code word in it. Okay. If it's closed under addition, that means W plus W, which will equal zero, uh, is inside there as well. So really, to show that a to, to show that a code is in fact a group code here, we have to show it's not empty, which is nearly always the case. I mean, how could you ever have an empty code? And you just need to close under addition. That's all we have to check to see that if it's a group code or not. But the thing is, one of the great advantages of group codes is in the simplicity of computing many properties, in particular the minimal distance. So in this theorem right here, suppose C is a group code. Remember, the minimum distance is the smallest distance between any two code, code words inside of the code here. Well, in a group code, so, well, we, we saw the significance of the minimum distance. The minimum distance told us something about how well can the code correct errors or detect errors and things like that, right? So if your minimum distance was D, remember, we could detect up to D minus 1 many errors and we could correct basically up to half of d minus one okay and so this minimum distance is important we would want to be able to we for a good code we want this minimum distance to be big and we also want to be able to calculate it in a group code turns out the minimum distance is very trivial to calculate the minimum distance is simply just going to be the minimum weight the minimum norm of vectors inside of the code so that is the minimum distance you just take all uh, the you take the smallest let the smallest weight of any non-zero clearly uh, if it's a group code it'll contain the zero vector that weight will be zero but if you take the minimum weight of a non-zero vector that's going to give you the minimum distance and this the reason we can throw out zero is the same reason with the minimum distance that we don't take the distance from a vector to itself that's always zero we need to take the smallest positive distance and in a group code, that'll coincide with the smallest positive weight. And so to see that, we'll remember the definition of the minimum distance, like I just explained a moment ago, is we take the smallest positive distance between vector two vectors where they are distinct vectors because we don't want the zero distance. 
We proved in a previous video in this lecture series that the distance between two vectors is equivalent to the weight of the sum of the two vectors. All right? So if x and y are not the same vector, that means their sum will not be zero. The only way the two, two binary sequences add together to be zero is if they were the same identical sequence right there. All right. Well, since we're a group code, like we mentioned on the previous slide, if it's a group code, it's closed under addition. And therefore, these two sets are measuring the exact same thing because of this connection, right? Uh, so we want to look for the minimum distance. Well, the minimum distance can be written as the minimum weight of the vector x plus y. But as it's closed under addition, x plus y is equally arbitrary uh, for these. If you look at all the combinations, uh, with like the Cayley table and such, you're going to get all of all of the elements are going to be shown up here actually in multiple ways. But the weight of x plus y needs to be minimal, in which case we just have to look at the minimal weight of the group code here. So let's go back to our 74 group code that we saw. Well, we can see it again right here. Um, so what is going to be the minimum weight? So let's just go through it. Clearly, we don't count the zero vector. Um, so, so we have this one. This one right here is a weight four. This one's weight three. So that's our winner so far if we're playing like king of the hill. Uh, here's one that's weight three. Um, and so we go through it. This is three, three, four, four, three, 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 four, four. It looks like they're mostly three or four, 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 three. And then this one's a seven, right? That's way too big. So our winner, ding, 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 um, was three. So the minimum weight was three. And so the, the minimum distance here is going to be three, which remember three can be written as two plus one. Therefore, that tells us we can detect up to two errors. I should probably say, we should probably say that's a two error detection level. And then likewise, three can be written as two times one plus one. So this code has the ability to, uh, to correct up to one error in transmission. So we can determine these, these uh, specifics of the code by looking at the minimum, the minimum weight. And so the connection between minimum weight and minimum distance comes from the fact that it's a group code. Uh, for an arbitrary code, we would have to go through a lot of checks to find a lot more. Basically, we'd have to go through 16 squared, uh, 256 calculations. For this one, since it's group code, we only have to go through 16. So, I mean, that's a scale of magnitude uh, simpler calculation there. So, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Group codes are the going to be the... Uh, that is, codes which are themselves groups are the tool we want to use and hence why we're in this algebraic coding theory lecture right now.